Chrissy. Always, um, always tough to follow Alex at a conference. I personally prefer to follow John Phillips from Blue. Uh, makes me look intellectually very smart. So if any of you got John on a text, can you please send that and let him know that I said that? Um, we go back a long time and it's upsetting when he's not here and I can't do it to his face, but I'll do it anyway. So I agree with Chrissy. We have what I believe is the best unconnected, yet to be connected 2P gas reserve on the uh, East Coast. We have a lot in common with what uh, Empire are doing. We're also looking for a 2025 start and I'll run you through that. I've only got about a dozen slides today in total. So important uh, disclaimer, do your own research, make your own decisions. Uh, in terms of our key achievements over the last 18 months, there's been quite a few. We've had a very, very busy time. Uh, I'll show you some maps in a minute which will explain this a little better. But one of the things we've been able to do uh, in the past year and a little bit is to buy APLNG Origin out of our Mahalo gas project. Um, we were able to borrow $13 million from Santos to do that, who are also our JV partner. Uh, and then Santos exercised an option, so we've rebalanced the joint venture from a three-party uh, joint venture that wasn't moving quickly to a two-party joint venture that will now move uh, much faster. We've had a big increase in reserves and resources late last year. I'll give you a slide on that. Uh, and as Chrissy mentioned, we're also about to sign our first gas sales agreement. It's been delayed. The government, as many of you will know, gave us a, bi a big boost last December, intervened in the gas market on the East Coast, and that basically just drove everything to a grinding halt. We're through that now, we're up and running again, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but we're excited. Uh, we've said in an ASX release not long ago that we plan to sign that GSA around the middle of this month, which is really sort of next week or the week after. As we move on, I don't want to talk a lot about um, uh, what the government's done in December and how they've unwound it uh, in by July. By the, by the time we got to February, they'd realised they'd made a mistake. Uh, by the time we got to July, we've got a mandatory code that exempts most of the, the small producers like ourselves. Um, how, uh, uh, you know, government was going to generate, uh, calculate a rate of return and tell us what our gas prices were going to be and still expect shareholders to tip money into this project kind of confuses me and just makes no sense. So luckily, uh, we've seen sense. Luckily, we've now got an exemption system that effectively exempts the small cap producers such at Comet Ridge, as long as we're producing gas to domestic market. And right now, we see domestic uh, gas prices are strong and remaining strong, and potentially as we head uh, into this decade, getting stronger and stronger. If this is a, a slide I, I felt I had to put in this time, and as you read the newspaper, I think all of us just shake our heads sometimes. How do we get so polarised on natural gas? Um, part of the population realises that without oil and gas and coal, our whole world comes to a grinding halt. Um, from our tennis shoes to our tennis net to our the glasses, the eyeglasses that I'm wearing now that I wouldn't have. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. It seems that... Um, our industry is generally, we focus on what's technically achievable and commercially sensible. Not everybody does that. Governments now seem to be driven by ideology. But ultimately, in the end, physics wins. Uh, we have to have gas um, to support the electricity network. We have to have gas to actually generate the minerals that are needed for renewables. We have to have gas for manufacturing. Uh, about, I think, two thirds of the world's fertilizers come from natural gas. So without it, we starve. So if some of the newspapers continue to want us to tell us it's all off, that's, it's all over, that's fine. But I think most of us in the room know that's not true. This is where Mahalo Hub sits uh, north. If you think of this as a high heel shoe, the, the lime green areas are the producing areas that the big LNG companies uh, produce from, uh, Arrow, QGC, Shell, APLNG Origin and Santos. Also, there's some smaller producers in there as well, Central Senex. We sit with the Mahalo hub up to the north. Uh, we're strategically only about 240 k's to the west of Gladstone. We've been able to uh, be in our joint venture that I just mentioned where we've extracted APLNG origin through a sale, but we've also won three new blocks uh, up in the north, which are coloured orange. Queensland is really a jurisdiction you want to play in in natural gas. The government's had commercial production since 1969. Roma had gas reticulated around the town in 1912. So Queenslanders know about natural gas. Both sides of uh, politics are comfortable with it. Uh, gas business is good in Queensland. We get stuff done, we get stuff done quickly. 
terms of our reserves, this is the booking I mentioned not long ago. Uh, if you start with the grey box on the bottom left, if you go back to 27th of June last year, uh, our corporate 2P recoverable reserve net to Comet Ridge was 106 petajoules. We then acquired, formally the next day, we signed up and paid the money and acquired uh, APLNG Origin share of Mahalo, which pushed us up another 46. Late in the year, we had a very successful pilot. Late in 2021, we went and drilled a wishbone lateral well, if you like, a, a long horizontal well in coal. We did a branch off that. We got to nearly 1,900 metres in coal and that well flowed uh, 1.75 million standard cubic feet a day. So a little bit less than the rates Alex is talking about, um, but we're spending less money on those. We're not fracking, um, so we have to spend less money to get that sort of flow rate. So the combination of that took us to 195 PJs of 2P. Uh, that's Comet Ridge Net Recoverable Reserve, and we're working now to increase that as we move to get our Mahalo hub into production. And what I see us doing is appraising as we go and building our reserve space as we go. Pre-development spend is always tougher to get. You've got to go around to your shareholders and raise money. If you've got FID on a project and you've got your funding in place and you're moving forward, you can always step out and drill that extra appraisal well and tie it back in. It's not flaring gas, it's making money for you right from the start. So I see us as, as appraising as we go. This uh, table is kind of interesting because it shows our total uh, reserves and resources over the Mahalo hub area in columns of 2P, 3P, 2C, 3C. Uh, we've also got a big position in the Galilee Basin with nearly 2,000 PJs of contingent resource, but that's not for today, that's for another time. The, uh, the map's interesting because it subdivides uh, the Mahalo JV block we have with Santos in the grey which Comet Ridge is 57% and Santos is 43%. And also the orange, which we've uh, won from the Queensland Government over the past two or three years by competitive tender. So we're very grateful for the Queensland Government that they've had the confidence to award Comet Ridge three blocks at 100%. It gives us a very, very material position in the area. Uh, the the grey uh, with Santos, the northern or the darker part of that grey to the north or the centre of the map, but to the northern part of the grey, uh, PLs, their petroleum leases, they're fully approved for development. So that's been done, environmentally approved, tick to go. We're now about to submit uh, our first application environmentally and for development in the number two box, uh, which we'll submit over the next couple of weeks to state and federal government, and also the development application to state government. Where there's a dotted blue line there that's hard to see, but we're talking to Gemina about being our infrastructure provider for Santos and Comet to sign up with Gemina to build the pipeline that we need that'll be a little bit under 80 kilometres, and we then take that capex out of our project uh, and we pay a tariff for use of that pipeline. It makes a lot of sense for us. So really the two key reserves numbers there to look at, 195 2P net to Comet Ridge in petajoules, and a 2P and 2C of just over 400. So we've been able to build that and we plan on continuing to build that as we go forward. The, uh, the path to production for us is really quite simple. Uh, it's Gemini to provide the infrastructure which gets, gets the Mahalo JV project in. It gets our northern orange 100% uh, blocks in. We've got a, a GSA we're about to sign with Cleanco. We've got a non-binding MOU with Orica that we're working through a process to look at uh, prepayment. I think there's a path here for small producers like us to take capex in from gas producers up front and then to ga direction gas buyers up front and then to actually produce gas for those buyers later at a slightly marked down price which enables the customer to recover their capital. Many of the companies we're talking to to sell gas, about selling gas, have balance sheets bigger than ours and it's not very difficult for them to open their wallets a little bit to tip uh, some capex into the project, it gets us funded, it gets us up and running, and then they're receiving a gas price down the track that's a little bit less than market price. I think uh, Mike Dodds from Vintage is here. Vintage has done a very good deal like that with AGL uh, just in the last six or 12 months on Barley, where AGL put money into the project and then takes gas at a, at a slightly discounted price. So we're working both our, our northern Mahalo hub block uh, uh, Mahalo North, Mahalo East. We're also working with Santos on the bigger Mahalo J JV block where they're the operator. We've got gross 2P there of 266 and as I mentioned, uh, we've got net of 195 across that whole area. 
We're, we're planning to grow our reserves and resources as we go. We've got Gemina plugged in now and we're about, we've just done a pre-feed study with Gemina. We're about to go to a full-blown feed study. Um, we believe that that will put us in a really good spot to FID the project uh, in second quarter next year and that gives us gas around the same time that Empire were talking in 4Q 2025, although Alex might be a little bit ahead of that. But we're working very hard so that within about uh, eight quarters, we're up and running with gas production. And we do expect the market to get tighter and tighter as we move through this decade. We're pleased also to have quality partners, I guess, if you'd, if you'd like to call it that, on this project with Santos as our JV partner and Gemina as our infrastructure provider. Um, and we're also doing, looking at the moment around our compression facility and how we might also tariff or toll our compression so that that's not front end capex, that's actually paid through through OPEX as we go forward. This, uh, this map on the right is one of my favourite. The green, is the U horseshoe shape is our high quality fairway. We're batting three for three on that fairway where we put lateral wells in there. The blue table on the left shows that the bottom one is our first one, which was a little baby one at only 360 metres. It flowed nearly a million cubic feet. Uh, we then went to a teenager, we went to a 900 metre lateral, it flowed 1.4. We've gone up again to a, a dual lateral that's nearly 1900 metres and 1.75. What's really pleasing about this last one is it's a single production well lateral doing all the heavy lifting on its own and it managed to get 1.75 million cubic feet on its own. Generally in our industry, a uh, pilot would have three, four, five, six, eight, ten different pilot wells uh, and we've been able to get this one to work on its own. So we're very encouraged with where this will go. Uh, as we get longer and longer uh, wells, the economics gets better and better. And we've heard recently Santos has drilled a 2,800 metre lateral and they're now moving out to 4,000 metres. So we see the economics as improving uh, all the time in a very strong gas market. Well, that's interesting. So we've simplified the JV structure. We're extensively appraised with our project. We know a lot about it. Uh, there's more to learn and we'll step out and appraise as we go. We're processing the infrastructure solutions. We see this as two separate projects where we participate in both, feeding into the one pipeline. We're 57% in the grey with Santos and we're 100% uh, in the north on our own 100% our own blocks. So we think that gives us quite a lot of strength. Uh, really the pipeline connection is the final piece of the puzzle that we're putting together now that sits just aside from our environmental approvals which we're, we're just about to lodge also. But we see a big diameter pipeline, 10 or 12 inch diameter, less than 80 kilometres. One big gas hub requires only one big pipeline. I think that's fairly simple. Um, we're also looking at a westerly option uh, that's possible. Um, but we're sort of just trying to line up the schedule on the, on the main project first and then we'll make a decision on the, the quicker east uh, westerly connection, if you like. So key messages, gas is here for a long time. The east coast market is strained. It will be, it will be strained for a long time. It, there's a lot more molecules need to come in. Um, the, the hub we've got just west of Gladstone is a big piece of business. We think it's the best quality 2P not, ready, not already connected to the market. Um, and we're, we're, in, uh, we're in a good space in terms of pipelines and infrastructure. And really just that's the uh, 20 seconds left, that's the corporate overview slide, trading about 16 and a half cents. Uh, we've got a market cap around the 170 million mark uh, and 10 million of debt through, some, through a, a, fund that, a, a fund we worked with a year and a half ago in terms of issuing some warrants. Um, that's, that's all, thanks for your attention. I'm here for today and tomorrow, come talk to me. I'll be out on the booth. Good